Hi everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today in the pursuit of knowledge we have put together a little test for you guys because NVIDIA has recently released the GeForce GTX 660 bringing the Kepler architecture at a much lower price point than what was previously available. So a big question that popped into my head and hopefully a lot of your heads as well is what does it take to be a 680 because the 680 for a while has been the fastest single GPU single video card solution from NVIDIA for quite a while. So what I did was I took two 660s provided by MSI over here on my left. Bear in mind, these are the overclocked Twin Frozer 3 versions. Uh, and I put those up against a single MSI GeForce GTX 680, and this is the stock reference model. Let's take a closer look at the Challenger. This is the MSI GeForce GTX 660. This is their Twin Frozer 3 cooling design that they've had on here. And this is the overclocked edition. So the 660 reference has five SMX units. That's 960 CUDA cores, GPU base clock of 980 megahertz, and a boost clock of 1033. MSI has cranked up the base clock on this particular video card to 1033, the boost clock up to 1098, and our specific cards that we tested here actually got up to 1137. Now bear in mind these are open air coolers, and the test bed we're using is an open air test bed, which in my experience does tend to perform a little bit better with open air coolers than in the shroud cooling design. Our 680 here, by comparison, is using NVIDIA's reference style cooling solution. That means it has a blower fan here, has an enclosed cooling shroud going around the majority of the outside of the card. Uh, the reference 680 has the GK104 GPU as compared to the GK106 that's used in the 660. This one has 1,536 CUDA cores, a base clock of 1,006, a boost clock of 1,058, and our card here was able to boost clock up to 1,084 megahertz. Again, that's as compared to our uh, 660s, which were boost clocking up to 1137, thanks to their overclock. Also, the memory on this is also 2 gigabytes, running at 6008 MHz effectively, and that's as compared to the 2 plus 2 gigabytes of memory running at 6008 MHz effectively in our 660s. Let's take a look at our test bed. Again, I did this as an open air solution because, uh, well, I didn't have a, enough time to build systems for all the tests I did. Uh, but I'm running a Intel Core i5 3570K processor. So that's an Ivy Bridge LG1155 processor. Also full PCI Express Gen 3 support for that. Also a very popular processor for a lot of folks looking to build a gaming system these days. Uh, the motherboard is an Asus Maximus 5 Gene. So Z77 motherboard, I'm running uh, 8 gigs of uh, G-Skill Trident X memory, DDR3, running at 2666. Uh, I have a Sigmatech Dark Knight cooler right there. Uh, I also have an SSD over on this side, so it's a, simply a 64 gig SanDisk uh, SATA Rev3 SSD. And uh, that pretty much does it for the test bed. So now that we've taken a look at the contenders, let's take a look at the benchmarks.
So there you have it folks, as you can probably tell, the 660s in SLI and pretty much every benchmark I ran are beating the 680 and uh, they're beating it by as much as 20 to 50 percent depending on what test I was running and what resolution I was running it at. So uh, the answer off the top of your head would probably be let's go with two 660s in SLI. And you should bear in mind there are a little few trade-offs uh, that you need to take into account. Uh, one is that you're going to need a higher wattage power supply in order to run two cards in SLI. You will of course need an SLI capable motherboard. Uh, Z77 is great because it supports uh, two-way SLI right out of the box uh, in pretty much every implementation. Uh, so uh, that's a great option for you. Uh, you're going to be running a little bit cooler overall. You're going to be using a little bit less wattage if you go with a single 680 and then of course you do have the option to upgrade to SLI 680s in the future if you do want to add on. Whereas with two 660s in SLI you're pretty much maxed out. You can't add anything to that without purchasing an entire new video card. Uh, so bear that all in mind. Hope this, uh, video, this video has helped you guys a little bit uh, out, help you guys out a little bit more with that buying decision. I'll try to finish talking, and uh, that, that's going to wrap it up. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you guys enjoyed this video, you can find more on our Newegg YouTube channel. Of course, don't forget to subscribe while you're there. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.